back. We are still on week number one. This is class, this is video number three. Today, we are gonna be talking about cues and markers. You are gonna need a couple of things for this class. I need you to make sure that you get a tennis ball or another ball that would bounce. And I also need you to have a clicker. And so I use the teardrop drop shaped clicker. They, they tend to feel really nice in my, in my hand and they have a really nice sound to them as well. All right, so what is a cue? A cue is how we get our dogs to perform a behavior. It can be verbal or it can be nonverbal. We used to call these command. I gave my dog the command to sit and that's kind of outdated lingo. So now we say the words cue, we gave our dogs a cue. So if I was to say Ember, that would be a verbal cue. And of course she looks at me or turns towards me or walks towards me when I give her that verbal. A nonverbal cue would be me using any part of my body and she knows what that means. So a nonverbal could be, Ember, are you ready? That's our cue for peekaboo, very good. And then it could also be, and she knows to lay down for that. In our classes, we're going to be teaching both verbal and nonverbal, even though our nonverbals are more effective. And the reason why nonverbals are more effective is because our dogs communicate with body language. So if Ember was in here and your dog ran in and Ember puts her butt up in the air like this and her front down and her tail's wagging, what does that tell your dog? Maybe play, maybe I'm excited to see you, right? However, if your dog ran in and Ember slinked back like this and tucked her tail, what would that tell her? Maybe your dog. That would tell your dog that maybe Ember was scared or, or, or frightened. What if your dog ran up to Ember and she bowed up and she showed her teeth? She would be saying, hey, get out of my face or stay back. So nonverbal cues are gonna be a little bit more effective, but to get those nonverbal cues to be effective, our dogs have to be looking at us. So when we get to class number two, our first game class, we're gonna be teaching you some focus games so that our nonverbals can be effective. Then we have a marker. A marker tells our dogs when they're doing something correctly. A marker can be anything from a word such as yip, or it could be a whistle, like you would train a dolphin, or it could be a clicker. This tells them when they have done something correctly. All right, you're not gonna carry your clicker around forever, I promise you that. As soon as your dogs are consistent, I always say when they are doing things eight out of 10 times. In other, in other words, they're 89 to 90% accurate when you're asking them. So if I ask Ember to sit and she sits eight out of 10 times, then the clicker can go away. But for now, it's a really, really good tool to train your dogs because when they hear this, the sound of a clicker actually, when it's, when it's taught right, increases the endorphins and the dog is more likely to wanna repeat the behavior because they know instantaneously when they have done it correctly, all right? So your behavior chain looks like this. If I ask Ember to do something, touch. As soon as she touches my hand, I click and then the reward follows. So let's talk a little bit about rewards really quick. We have several different rewards for our dogs. Food is always a very motivating factor. We wanna make sure that when we're doing dog training that we give them decent treats because they're gonna get a lot of them when we're training. Don't give them crappy pepperonis or begging strips or anything with a lot of dyes or fillers and definitely nothing from China. Um, I use a lot of um, dog food for our uh, rewards. I will use Zeewee Peak, I use Stella and Chewy's Meal Mixers. These are high value, good quality dog foods, plus the dogs think that they're high value because they're super yummy. Um, then we have Toy Play. Toy Play would be playing tug. Of course, we can toss a ball for them. Anything that your dog loves toy wise. And then we have Praise. Praise is super important as well. If I'm sitting here talking and then I say good girl and I continue on, that really was not praise for my dog. However, I can change my voice a little bit. What a good girl, that was very nice. And then we wanna make sure that we pet them in the place that they like the most. We had an older gentleman in class one time and we were teaching sit 
And the following week he came back and he says, Jolynn, my dog won't sit anymore. And I said, well, why is your dog not sitting anymore? I said, well, show me. And just like all dogs do, when their owners say they don't do something, they make them a liar in front of me. And of course his dog sat. So then he reached over to his dog and he goes, pat, 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 pat on the head. The dog goes like this. So what was happening there? He thought he was offering a reward to his dog. His dog taught, thought it as punishment being smacked in the head a couple of times. So every time he asked his dog to sit, the dog said, no way I'm not going to sit because he didn't want to be smacked in the head. So make sure that your rewards are rewards and you give them something that they like when you're going to offer praise. Also, we have life rewards. Life rewards are those rewards that your dogs like. It could be you sitting in the floor and wrestling with them. It could be asking them to load up in the truck. It could be doing something with them, training with them, and then letting them jump in the kiddie pool. Whatever your dog thinks a reward is or is motivating, you can use that for your dogs when you are training. All right, so back to our clicker. Our clicker is the marker. It tells them when they've done it correctly. So there's several different ways that we can use um, train this clicker. So I'm going to show you, but I have to get Ember out of the picture really quick so she doesn't steal my tennis ball. Zach, can you call Ember over and hold her just for a second? Ember. All right. So I want you to get your I want you to get your tennis ball out, and this is going to be practice. Your tennis ball is your dog. What we want your dog to do is bounce. If I bounce the ball, are you going to click before, during, or after? After, you have from one to two seconds to click to tell the dog that they did it correctly. Don't worry about your food or your reward. We'll talk about that in the next video. So what I want you to do is I want you to bounce and click. Bounce and click. Bounce and click. Go ahead and do that a couple of times. When you're done doing that side a couple of times, I want you to switch and I want you to bounce and click. Bounce and click. And you're doing this on your other hand just like that. Excellent. Then your next way that I want you to practice is duration. If I broke a glass and I told Ember to stay, I wouldn't say stay and then click right away because I'm not done yet. I still have to go over here and clean up the glass. So sometimes we have duration before we're done with the cue. So your ball is gonna represent time. What I want you to do is I want you to drop your ball as soon as your ball finishes moving, I want you to click. Do that twice. Very nice. If you had any question on those at all, just go ahead and let me know. So your dogs don't know what a clicker is. So your next homework assignment, I want you to charge your clicker. Charging means that we're gonna make the relationship between the clicker and that it means something positive. So I want you to have 10 treats and I want you to do this the next two days. So 10 treats at a time, twice a day for two days. If you do it more, that's perfectly fine, but I want you to do it at least twice a day. All you're going to do is click and give your dog a reward. Now, if your dog chews a lot, you have to wait till they're done chewing before you can click and give them another one. But if you have a dog that eats very quickly or swallows everything whole, you can go as fast as you can click and reward the dog. So it's just click and reward, wait for them to finish chewing, click and reward, and you're gonna do this 10 times in a row. All we're doing is we're making the relationship that the click means something good is going to happen. If your dog takes your fingers off when you do this, you can easily get low and click and set your reward on the floor. Click and set your reward on the floor. And you can do it that way to save your little fingertips. Now it's very important that your dog is not jumping on you when you're doing this. We never want to reward a dog jumping. And so we want them to be in any other position. They can sit, they can down, they can, they can be standing just as long as they're not jumping on you. All right, so your last homework assignment in video number three is catching behaviors. I want you this week to just catch behaviors. If your dog just walks up to you, hum, I'm saying the word, clicking for it because my dog just walked up to me and then you're going to reward them. If your dog goes over and just lays down, down, 
and then I want you to reward them. The fun thing about catching behaviors is you can catch some fun behaviors that your dogs do on a regular basis. If your dog stretches a lot, that big oh, stretch, and the butt's up in the air, and the, and the front end is down, every time they do it, you can click bow and give them a reward. Bow and give them a reward. Soon, you've done this on a regular basis, that you can ask your dog bow, and they're gonna produce a behavior. That's what catching is. And that's your other homework for this week. So that was work three, week three. This was a long lesson, but you're gonna have a lot of fun with it.